Hi everyone and welcome again. So we continue with our series of lessons about elements of fiction and today in this lesson we will try to uh, tackle okay, another element through answering the question who? Of course as you know who refers to characters. So this is the second element of fiction we will study today. However, concerning characters, also critics may use another similar term, which is characterization. Characterization. Now, what do we mean, or what is the difference between characters and characterization? In fact, characterization is uh, related to characters. All right. It is the way how characters are presented or revealed clearly or introduced okay in the story okay in the story there are many ways that uh, writers or narrators okay use to introduce and present uh, these characters all right so these ways are called okay or modes are called characterization so we can uh, have uh, that direct depiction of characters okay it's the first way how characters are uh, presented in a story okay direct uh, presentation of characters like what we have in the novels of uh, Charles Dickens for example All right I was born in this and in that and so on clear uh, on that night and so on uh, we have also another way of present presenting characters which is uh, through uh, uh, exposing, all right, or uh, mentioning, or uh, those, okay, actions of the character himself, okay, we learn about the character through his uh, actions, all right, either his uh, speech or his behavior. This second way, okay, either his speech or his behavior. So. The characters, okay, actions also are another way of characterization. Uh, also, another third, okay, uh, way of or mode of characterization is uh, that when the other characters, okay, speak about him, inform us about him. All right, so we learn about characters in a story uh, uh, through what the other characters say about him so all these are different ways which represent okay characterization or represent how characters are revealed okay and presented in a, a piece of fiction or in a story clear in a story on the other hand we have the way or the other term which is characters now this as you know they represent those usually persons clear or if you can say acting uh, elements most of the time they are uh, persons, clear. Uh, and sometimes they are also not non persons. For example, we have animals sometimes, like what we have in uh, Animal Farm, okay, uh, of George Orwell, right? And also what we have in uh, The Jungle, okay, or the Book of the Jungle, right? Mowgli and the other uh, animals, which are also uh, participant characters in that story. So, characters usually also uh, refers to those okay personalities in a story clear but also it has another meaning which is the the characteristics and the traits okay that uh, these personalities have okay the uh, characteristics or the traits that these personalities right or that uh, these characters have right have so this is simply okay, uh, a brief introduction about the difference between characters, the second element of fiction. All right, we need to uh, focus on whenever we want to analyze and study any story critically, right? Taking, of course, into account how these characters are presented. I mean, the mode of characterization, the mode of characterization, clear characterization, and it's different. Uh, ways clear. So here, right on our top, it refers to persons, 
All right. Or also the trace of these characters. Here the ways. All right. How characters are presented. Are presented. We say either through the direct depiction of the narrator or through their actions, speech or behavior, or also through what the other characters say about them. Now we can summarize from okay all these uh, types within character relation two ways or two modes of characterization. The first one is called right here modes of characterization. All right, the direct presentation. Or what we call it, telling. Telling. All right. And we have also, on the other hand, showing. Showing. In telling, number one, okay, we have that kind of expository and explanatory presentation of uh, characters. Clear. Of uh, characters. Uh, which are explained and described by the narrator. Okay, directly. They are described and depicted by the narrator directly. All right, that's why it's called either uh, telling or direct presentation. Clear. On the other hand, we have the second mode, which is indirect presentation, right, or dramatic presentation, or also it's called showing. It's called showing. In this mode, of course, we have that kind of indirect presentation of characters through either their actions. For example, we learn that this character is, I don't know, uh, is violent through his way of acting in the story. Okay. For example, he always shouts, he always. Uh, involves himself in violent actions, right, he is aggressive, so these uh, actions of him, when he uh, beats others, hits others, clear, uh, inform us that this person is, okay, is aggressive, is violent, clear, right, uh, actions, whether through his speech, while you are speaking, or also behavior, clear, or also behavior, right, is number one. Second one, inside showing, is how okay other characters or what okay what other characters say about him say about about him. All right, say about. Him. Him. So these are the two modes of characterization. Of characterization, as you see here, we have direct presentation of characters through depiction directly, and we have the indirect one, dramatic one, or showing through uh, presenting him through his actions, speech or behavior, also through what other actors say about him. Here it is, first one, direct. Presentation. Presentation. Go. It is concerning uh, types of characterization or modes of characterization. Okay. Now let's go back to our uh, first element, which is characters. Characters, as you know, in any story, okay, uh, there are characters who uh, steer, okay, the course of the action in this story, who uh, don't know, uh, mobilizes, right, that storyline of that uh, piece of fiction and so on. So, but there are different types of characters, okay, and usually we have two main categories of characters. We have what we call main characters, which play a central role, that's why they are called either main characters, major characters, or central characters. And we have what we call also, on the other hand, second type or category, which is uh, minor characters, clear. Or we, also we can say secondary characters. 
Okay, so these are the two types of characters in it. Uh, any story, usually any story and any piece of of fiction, clear, any piece of fiction. Now, critics also use other terms to describe both types of characters, major characters and minor ones. Okay, they use many other terms to describe them and also to uh, give them that, you can say, uh, critical, right, uh, qualities, okay, which, uh, so which we can distinguish between uh, them in terms of roles, in terms of also uh, action, okay, in the uh, storyline of, of the story. So, let's write here on the board, sorry, the two types of characters. Which are subtypes of characters. We have what we call major, clear major characters, or main, or central, if you want to say. And we have minor, right, minor characters. Now, for major characters, critics also use another term to describe them. They are called also round. And sometimes also they call them dynamic. Now, if we want to compare between the two types of characters, we find that both of them okay, are participant in the story, okay, line of the, of the novel or of the short story or of the piece of fiction, but they differ in terms of, okay, the role they play. So, the role of the main character, main character is more important, clear, and also than the minor uh, character's role, right, number one. Number two, it covers more time and space, clear, uh, than uh, the time and space minor character's role play and also it is more okay uh, influential right uh, on to, to the plot right influential uh, at the level of the plot of the story than okay the role of the minor characters clear minor characters role <coughs> but also another important feature that concerns if you can say the qualities themselves of these two types of characters now, for the major one, okay, it is an ever-changing character, okay, an evolving character, which evolves, which, uh, or who, sorry, as a person, usually, who uh, develops, who uh, evolves, okay, through different events, different adventures, the different troubles, okay, of the story. That's why he grows, okay, he matures, okay, and he reaches, as you can say that, uh, for example, uh, uh, I don't know, that level of fruition, okay, and the, of maturity, of maturity. That's why when we say round, we mean fully developed character. Fully developed character. When we say dynamic, okay, it means it is always changing, developing, evolving character. Clear? Changing, developing, and evolving character. Now, on the other hand, minor character is described by critics uh, as uh, flat, also character, as static, right, and sometimes also they call it stock, stereotype, stereotype. And of sometimes it's called even archetype. Archetype, correct, clear, correct. For a flat, as you know, something which is flat, it's a bit superficial, clear, superficial, one dimensional character. Okay, either always or always good, okay, always bad, All right? Always good, or always, always uh, uh, bad. For example, we have uh, the witch in Snow White, okay, it's a flat, All right? Uh, the stepmother in many stories is always uh, evil and 
and uh, ugly and so on, it's always flat. Okay, here also it's called static. Okay, it means fixed in terms of uh, change, it doesn't change at all, right? Or it, uh, and it takes only uh, a very, okay, a weak degree of, of a change. Okay, if there is any degree of, of course. Clear. So, flat, right, doesn't change. It has one dimension, one side, always good, always bad. Clear. Uh, always sometimes funny in some uh, stories or novels, for example, you find a companion of, I don't know, uh, of uh, the, the major character is someone who is always funny, right, and has a sense of humor, uh, but he never changes. That is the role that the author always gives to him from the beginning of the story till the end. That's why it is called also static. Static. Also, stock stereotype and archetype. This one represents a particular figure, a particular quality okay, of a character. For example, we have the cowboy, who is always brave. We have, I don't know, uh, the knight in the uh, uh, chivalry okay, stories, who is always noble and brave and courageous, clear and courteous. Clear. We have all that same uh, features and qualities that never change okay, about him. Uh, also, we have, for example, the witch, also another type, which is always ugly and wants to revenge and is envious and jealous okay so all these represent uh, those fixed clear uh, qualities for this type of uh, minor character minor character all right uh, by contrast or okay on the contrary we have uh, the major one is always developing is developed is uh, someone which uh, is okay you can say uh, vulnerable to uh, to, to, to evolution, right, to growth, to maturity, and so on. Clear. So, uh, these are the different terms we can use when we want to study and uh, analyze any story or piece of fiction, right, from the angle of its characters. We have to use these, uh, these terms to show that, okay, we already have uh, full mastery of those uh, terms and what they uh, connote and denote also. Clear. Good. Also, at the level of character, we have another division, another division, which is the protagonist and its opposite antagonist. Antagonist. <coughs> the protagonist, as you know, is the main character, nearly synonymous. Okay, to this term. He is the one who is uh, playing the major role in a story, okay, uh, or a novel or a piece of fiction. Now, on the other hand, we have the antagonist. He is the character, okay, usually uh, an evil, uh, sometimes, okay, or most of the times, and we can uh, consider him or define him more precisely by saying that he is always the character who is in struggle. He is in struggle with the, the protagonist. In struggle with the protagonist. Clear, we have protagonist, male character, and the antagonist is okay, the one who is in struggle with him. He may also play a very important role, okay, to steer the actions of the story and to create that kind of uh, conflict, suspense, okay, and struggle also. Clear, and struggle also. So these are simply different terms, okay, and different types of characters and characterizations. Okay, you should take into account whenever you want to study and analyze any literary text, particularly okay, focusing on the element of uh, characters, which is the second element of fiction. All right, of fiction. So, thanks so much and wish you the best.